This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. It was a huge cloud of vapors. A big sniffing hound trying to smell him out. It pushed its wet cold nose up to the house, taking air, trying to get in the windows and doors, following him from room to room, watching him from all the windows, waiting. Ray Bradbury's The Wind. Get that. I'm busy with the food. Coming. Hello. Hello, Herb? What's you, Alan? Yeah, y- yes. Uh, Herb, I-, I have to ask you something. Go ahead, Alan. I'm listening. Well, I just wondered if your wife was home. Sure. Why? Oh, darn. What's up? Nothing. You sound I... funny, Alan. No, no, really. I'm fine. Good, good. Herb, I... I wondered if you could come over tonight. Can't. We're having company. Stoddard and his wife, you know. Haven't seen them in months. I really wanted you to come over tonight. Sorry. When's your wife going away? That's next week, Alan. For how long? She'll be in Ohio for about nine days. Her mother's sick. I'll come over then. I wish you could come over tonight. I would if I could. But with company and all, my wife would kill me. I know. (laughs) But I wish you'd come over. What is it? Alan? Nothing. Is it the wind? Is it? Oh, no. No. It's... It is the wind again, isn't it? Yeah. It's the wind. Alan, it's a clear night. There's not much wind. Well, there's enough. It comes in the window and blows the curtains a little bit. Just enough to tell Who me... Who is it, honey? It's Alan. Look, Alan. Why don't you come and spend the night here? We've got plenty of room. Oh, no. No. It's too late for that. It's only 6.30. You could be here by 7.00. No, it, it might catch me on the way over. It's not that far. That's 30 miles. I, I wouldn't dare. But thanks. Besides, it's, it's already getting dark. Well, take a sleeping pill anyway. Sure. Herb, dinner's on. Be right there. Ellen, dinner's waiting. Right. Herb, I've been standing at the door for the past hour. I can see it building up from the west. There's some clouds there, and I saw one of them kind of rip apart at the top. There's a wind coming, all right. Well, you just take a sleeping pill and call me any time. You mean it? Of course I do. Later this evening, if you want. We'll be home all night. All night? Yes. Call me later. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, Alan? Yeah, but but I wish you'd come out. I, I wouldn't want you hurt or anything. You're my best friend, Herb, and I wouldn't want anything to happen to you on my account. No. After all, there's no telling what could happen if you tried to come out here... Maybe it's best I face this thing alone. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. What are friends for, Alan? I tell you what you do. Sit down and get some writing done this evening. How does that sound? Sure. You'll forget all about the Himalayas and the Valley of the Winds and this preoccupation with storms and hurricanes. Get another chapter done on your next travel book. Yeah, I, I might do that. M- maybe I will. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I will. <sighs> Thanks a lot for letting me bother you. No problem, Alan. Gotta go. My wife's calling me to dinner. Okay, pal? Sure. Thanks, Herb. Bye-bye. Well, what did he want tonight? Same thing, you know. Him and his winds. He's got winds that blow up and winds that blow down and blow hot and blow cold. Well, he did have quite a time in the Himalayas during the war. You don't believe what he said about that valley, do you? No. I don't know. Herb. Well, it makes a good story. And that's all it is, a story. Maybe. Climbing around. Climbing things. 
Why do men climb mountains and scare themselves? Ah, oh, eat your dinner. It was snowing. Was it? And raining and hailing and blowing all at once in that valley. Alan's told me a dozen times. He tells it well. He should. Well, he was up pretty high, clouds and all. The valley made it a noise. I bet it did. Like a lot of winds instead of just one. Winds from all over the world. At least that's what he says. He shouldn't have gone there in the first place. You go poking around and first thing you know you get funny ideas. Like winds getting angry at you for intruding and following you home. Don't make fun of him. He's my best friend. It's all so silly. Not to Alan. Well... He's been through a lot, you know. That big storm in Bombay, and then that typhoon off New Guinea two months later, and that time in Cornwall. I have no sympathy for a man who continually runs into windstorms and hurricanes and then gets a persecution complex because of it. I'll get it. Don't answer it. Well, maybe it's important. It's only Alan again. Let it ring. But I... There. That wasn't so hard. I hope it wasn't anything important. Like the office or the kids. Your mate's getting cold. I don't believe it. I can't let it ring. Herb! Hello. Herb, it's Alan. Oh, hello. Herb, it's here. It got here. Uh, you're too near the receiver. Back up a little. Is it Alan again? Herb, I stood in the open door and waited for it. I saw it coming down the highway, shaking all the trees one by one until it shook the trees just outside the house. And it dived down toward the door and I slammed the door in its face. How interesting. Herb. What is it? It's nothing. I'll be off the phone in a minute. It's all around the house, Herb. In the back, in the front, all alongside by the bushes. I can't get out now. I can't do anything. I, I see. But I fooled it. I let it think it had me. And just as it came down to get me, I slammed the door and locked it. I've got a good, sturdy front door now. Put it up last Saturday. I was ready for it. I've been getting ready for weeks. Have you now? Well, tell me about it. It started about six weeks ago. Oh, yes? I well, thought I had it licked. Did you? I thought it had given up following and trying to get me, but it was just waiting. Was it? Yes, and then six weeks ago, I heard the wind laughing and whispering around the corners of my house out here just for an hour or so. Not very long and not very loud. Then it went away. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. But it came back the next night. It slammed the shutters and kicked sparks out of the chimney. I see. It came back five nights in a row, a little stronger each time. When I opened the front door, it came in and tried to pull me out of the house, but it wasn't strong enough. Tonight, it is. Glad to hear you're feeling better. I'm not better. What's wrong with you? I I is your wife listening to us? Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, I see. I know I sound like a fool. Not at all. Go on. Well, there's this... Herb, I'm going back to the kitchen. Fine, I'll be right there. Go ahead, Alan. We can talk now. My wife's out of the room. Get it out of your system. You'll sleep better. Herb, it's all around the house now. Like a great big vacuum cleaner nuzzling at all the gables. What was that? It's knocking the trees around in the yard. That's funny. I don't hear any wind outside. Oh, of course not. It doesn't care about you, only about me. Well, I guess that's one way to explain it. It's a killer, Herb. The biggest, meanest, prehistoric killer that ever hunted prey. It's trying to smell me out, find me. When it finds me in the parlor, it drives its pressure there. And when I'm in the kitchen, it goes there. It's trying to get in the windows now. But I had them reinforced. And I put new hinges on all the doors and new bolts. It's a strong house, all right. They built them strong in the old days. Yes, they did. I've got all the lights on now. All over the house. The house is lit bright as day. The, the wind followed me from room to room, looking through all the windows. When I switched on the lights... Oh. Alan, what's going on? It just snatched off the front screen door. I wish you'd come over here and spend the night. I can't. I can't leave the house. Not now. I can't do anything like that. I know this wind. Oh, it's big and it's clever, all right. I tried to light a match a moment ago and a little draft sucked the flame out. It likes to play games. It likes to taunt me. It's taking its time with me. 
It's gone all night. Look at look at that. What is it, Alan? One of my old travel books on the library table. <laughs> you won't believe this, Herb. A little breeze from some little hole in the house is blowing open the pages one by one. <laughs> I wish you were here to see this. There's my introduction going by. Do you remember the introduction to my book on Tibet, Herb? Yes. Remember, it says, This book is dedicated to those who lost the game of elements, written by one who had seen, but who has always escaped. Yes, I remember. Herb, the lights just went out. Alan. The, the power lines just went down. Are you there, Herb? I'm here. I hear you. It figures, doesn't it? The wind doesn't like all that light in my house, so it tore the power lines down. The telephone will probably go next. Oh, it's a real party, me and the wind. Just a second. Hang on. Alan. Alan. What is it? I don't know. I I'm back. There was a draft from the door, so I shoved some wadding under it to keep it from blowing on my feet. Oh, I'm glad you didn't come out after all, Herb. I wouldn't want you in this mess. There! It just broke one of the living room windows. And there's a regular gale in this house, knocking pictures off the wall. Do you hear it? I hear it. It wants me alive, Herb. It doesn't dare knock the house down at one fell blow. That'd kill me, and it wants me alive. So it can pull me apart finger by finger. It wants what's inside me. My mind. My brain. It wants intellect. Herb, your supper's getting ruined. My wife's calling me, Alan. I have to finish dinner. It's a big cloud of vapors. Winds from all over the world. The same wind that ripped the Celebes a year ago. The same Pompero that killed in Argentina. The typhoon that fed on Hawaii. The same one that battered the coast of Africa early this year. It's part of all those storms I escaped from. It followed me from the Himalayas because it didn't want me to know what I know about the Valley of the Winds, where it gathers and plans its destruction. I know its feeding grounds. I know where it is born and where parts of it expire. And it hates me for that. The books I write tell how to defeat it. And it doesn't want me preaching anymore. It wants to incorporate me into its huge body to give it knowledge. It wants me on its side. I have to hang up now, Alan. My wife... What? What did you say? Call me back in about an hour, Alan. But I can't... In an hour. Goodbye, Alan. Like out tonight? Nice. Not very chilly. Lots of stars. Why? Nothing. Uh. Herb? Pass the bread, will you? can't believe it. You can believe it. Look for yourself. Maybe you better quit while you're ahead, dear. Absolutely not. Deal the cards, Liz. Well, all right, but don't say you weren't warned. Just deal them. Anyone like some more sandwiches? Not me. I'm stuffed. How about you, dear? Herb? Hmm? I want a sandwich? I don't think Herb's with us tonight. <laughs> Sorry, Stoddard. Just been thinking. Here we all are, and Life sure is funny. Well, that's profound. How do you figure that? Oh, I don't know, except here we are living our lives, and someplace else on Earth, a billion other people live their lives. That's a rather obvious statement. <laughs> Stoddard, life can be a lonely thing, even with married people. Sometimes when you're in a person's arms, you feel a million miles away from them. <laughs> well, I like that. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, we all believe what we believe and live our own little lives while other people live entirely different ones. I mean, we sit here in this room while a thousand people are dying all over the world. Some of cancer, some of pneumonia, some having heart attacks. 
I bet someone's dying right this second of a car accident. This isn't very stimulating conversation. I mean, we all live. And don't think about how other people think or live their lives or die. We wait until death comes to us. What I mean is here we sit on our self-assured rear ends while 30 miles away in a big old house completely surrounded by night and who knows what, one of the finest guys who ever lived is... Sorry. Is it my turn? You dealt. It's my lead. Right. Oh, no. I'll get it. Hello? Herb, I've been calling and calling. What, what's it like at your house? What do you mean, what's it like? Has your company come? Of course they've come. Uh, are you talking and laughing and playing cards? Yes, but what's that got to are do? Are you all cozy with the windows up and a fire crackling? Well, then, what's Sounds it? great, Herb. Sounds great. I, I wish I could be there. I wish I didn't know the things that I know. I wish a lot of things. Alan, are you all right? So far, so good. I'm locked in the kitchen now. Why? Well, simple. Her part of the front wall of the house blew in about ten minutes ago. What? Well, don't worry. I planned my retreat. When the kitchen door gives, I'm heading for the cellar. If I'm lucky, I may hold out there until morning. It'll have to tear the whole damn house down to get me. And the cellar door is pretty solid. I have a shovel down there. I... I may dig deeper. What's that? That? Well, that's the voices of thousands killed in a typhoon. A hurricane, a cyclone. That's what the wind is. It's a lot of people. Dead people. The wind killed them. Took their minds to give itself intelligence. It took all their voices and made them into one voice. All those millions of people killed in the past 10,000 years, tortured and run from continent to continent on the backs and bellies of monsoons and whirlwinds. Oh, Herb, what a poem you could write about it. Hear it? Listen. Come on back, Herb, it's your turn. Uh, Alan, I... That's how the wind gets more intelligent each year. It adds to itself, body by body, life by life. We're waiting for you, Herb. Look, I'm on the phone. Can't you see? I'm on the phone. Alan, if you want me to come out there now, I will. I should have come earlier. No, thanks, Herb. Not now. This is a grudge fight. Wouldn't do to have you in it. I'd better hang up now. The kitchen door looks bad. I'll have to get in the cellar. Call me back later? Maybe, if I can. If I'm lucky. Frankly, I'm amazed it's left the phone lines up so long. I've escaped so many times before, but I think it has me now. I think it does. I hope I haven't bothered you too much, Herb. You haven't bothered anyone, Alan. Call me back in a few minutes. Okay? I'll try. It's about time. Sorry. How is he? Is he sober? He's never taken a drink in his life. I should have gone out there hours ago. Look, he's called every night for six weeks, and you've gone out there at least ten nights to stay with him, and nothing was wrong. He needs help. He might hurt himself. You were just out there two nights ago. You can't always be running after him. I know, I know. Herb, what's the problem? Alan needs professional help. The kind of help we can't give him. I know that. Don't you think I know that? First thing in the morning, I'll have someone look at him. Who? I don't know. Hey, my brother-in-law is a psychologist with the school district. I bet he could recommend somebody. Sure, Jerry knows lots of people. He could help Alan. I've fought against this for months. I know, but it's for his own good, Herb. I know. You're right. If only he'd had an easier time of it. He was the only one to survive a blizzard in the Himalayas during the war. He almost froze to death hanging onto a rope. When they found him, they could hardly pry his fingers loose. He was in the hospital six months recovering from that. Poor man. No wonder he needs help. 
He wanted an old house surrounded by trees where the wind couldn't get at him. There's nothing more you can do for him, Herb. First thing in the morning, I'll take care of it. We'd better be going. Oh, so soon? I think so. Yeah. Oh, thanks for everything. Hope things work out for everyone. <laughs> I'll call you later, Liz. Sure thing. Good night. Night. Night, Herb. Drive careful. Sorry. I know that's not the first evening Alan spoiled. I'll clean up. I think I'll see how he's doing. I just need to know. What? Well, what is it? Oh, the call didn't go through. Try the operator. Operator. Operator, could you please try 555-0512? All the lines are down in that district. They're what? When the lines are repaired, your call will go through. But... She hung up. What's wrong? The telephone lines are down. They are? I knew it. Where are you going? I'm getting my coat and going out there. I should have been there hours ago. I just knew it. The poor guy's probably scared out of his wits by now. And to think he asked my help and I refused him. Oh, some friend I am. Herb, don't. I've got to get out there. Don't you understand? What was that? I don't know. It's coming from the door. <laughs> There's someone out there. Could be at this hour. Listen. I'd know that laugh anywhere. It's Alan. Yes. Here, take my coat. He must have come over in his car after all. He couldn't wait until morning to tell me his confounded stories about the wind. <laughs> Listen to that. He probably brought some friends with him. Sounds like a lot of other people. <laughs> Alan, you old... Alan? None of your tricks now. Come on. Where are you, Alan? 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 Alan, where are you? Died down, sad, mourning in the high trees, passing away, going back out to the sea, to the Celebes, to the Ivory Coast, to Sumatra and Cape Cod, to Cornwall and the Philippines, fading, fading, fading. adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Bob Nelson, Charlotte Nelson, Jesse Bennett, Mike Flynn, and Janet Swenson. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mead. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced, and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eitert. 
This is Paul Fries speaking. And we'll have more from Ray Bradbury in tomorrow night's programme. Let's hope the weather's improved by then, otherwise I'll never get my umbrella the right way round again. And now, a word from Ray's biographer, Sam Weller. Ray Bradbury, I think, is one of the most important literary figures in the 20th century. When he was a child, he dreamt of of writing stories in the vein of Edgar Allan Poe and H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. And he did that. He is a fantastic fabulist. He is our modern mythologist, in my opinion. But at the same time, he also has sort of catapulted himself into the literary pantheon. His books are collected and shelved alongside Hemingway and Fitzgerald just as easily as L. Frank Baum and Lewis Carroll. His short stories are collected in the most esteemed and revered collections of short literature. So he's really this towering figure of imaginative literature. And I think he's oftentimes just looked at simply as a genre writer, science fiction or fantasy. But he has been so embraced by the literary establishment over the years and and more, more recent decades. He's a part of school curriculums around the world, particularly his work Fahrenheit 451, which was published in October of 1953. He's in a privileged position at the age of 90 where he has lived to see his own literary acceptance. 